Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, well, this time it will not be an in-character video, and what is this video about? It's um, an introductory video to World of the Apocalypse dedicated to uh, Rage Across New Serum, which is the werewolf uh, experiment for the New Serum venue. Uh, a bit about the venue, it is not connected uh, in uh, any way with the vampire one, so there's no crossing over. Um, it uses the same location, maybe some people will be the same, some NPCs such as the mayor, but otherwise the venue itself will remain separate uh, to not cause intera bad interaction between vampires and werewolves. Uh, on the other hand, let's go back to the topic at hand. We are talking about character creation. This video is dedicated to both new players or experienced World of Darkness players who have never tried Werewolf before. Uh, and the aim is, of course, to help you create your character. I will be creating a character to demonstrate um, how um, the process works from A to Z. And in the end, of course, I hope it will be helpful and you have learned something out of it. I will be using, of course, as the rules say, the Werewolf, the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition rules, limited just to just the core rule book. Um, and let's begin, shall we? I will be sharing my screen. And by the way, I am using Mr. Gon's interactive character sheets. Uh, the website contains quite a large number of interactive PDF character sheets, useful in many World of Darkness games, to my knowledge, but not only. Um, I will be posting the links in this video's comment. You know, it's down below on YouTube. And um, you will be able to follow from there. Uh, now remember, if you wish to acquire the rulebook for World of the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition, it is available on DriveThruRPG. Links below. So, here we go. So, um, as I was saying, um, I am uh, now basically using an interactive character sheet. I'm here using Foxit Reader. Um, it's much easier to fill out a character sheet, and it will be what we will be using, except besides uh, a text sheet, which will be uploaded to the forums anyway. But I, I do recommend using these for keeping the uh, your things together. So let's start by creating a character. First, of course, we need to think about a name. Well, my character will be called um, Miss Mist Paul. Let's call him Mist Paul. Of course, my player. This will be your player name. This is my name, and let's see, here you would write for Chronicle Rage Across New Serum. Now, uh, for this character, I'm going to do something different than what I usually do. Um, and I will introduce the character creation process. Um, now, in World of the Apocalypse, uh, besides the similarities to other games, how are these werewolves unique? Well, all werewolves are the child, the product child, of the union of either two uh, human kinfolk. Kinfolk, by the way, are humans or wolves that are related to werewolves, so they carry the gene, but let's call it the gene, but it's inactive. Or a human and a werewolf. The other choice is they can be born a wolf which is um, the child of two wolfkin, kinfolk, or um, a werewolf and a wolf. Uh, the last choice is Metis. Metis basically is the child of two werewolves, and by definition, according to werewolf laws, which I will not be getting into now, is a breach in the litany causing great shame to the septs and the septs, the communities, 
and the respective parents for producing such, such a child. Um, Metis, by the way, are characterized uh, in the fact that they have a deformity or multiple deformities, usually just one, but some are unlucky and are born two. And they are raised within world society because they are born in their krinos, their war form. So uh, interacting with humans would be nigh impossible. A bit um, about the breeds again. Uh, homids, aka human born werewolves and metis, um, do not have at character creation any ability restrictions. Lupus being raised by wolves do, <sighs> do have them. Uh, they are, well, they don't really follow the same uh, uh, path to thinking. They don't really follow abstract thinking so well. They think more in the here and now than um, what was and what will be. They're a bit more down to earth and let's just say more to the axe to the face, as I usually say. But this character will be a metis. So in these character sheets, or if you have a paper character sheet, of course, at hand, simply just write down metis. I will just choose here because this character will be a metis. Now, what are auspices? Auspices are the moon signs, the, the moon uh, phase in which your werewolf was born. Uh, in our case, we would have Ragabash, which is the new moon. These are scouts, tricksters, questioners of the way. They're basically werewolves who really think out of the box and try to help their society by either, of course, gathering for information or questioning the plans of their elders, but not to disrespect them, to help them find flaws and improve them, among other things. Then we will have the Theurge. The Theurge is the crescent moon. They are the shamans, the ones who deal with mostly with the spirit world. They communicate with spirits. <laughs> they uh, perform rites. They um, create magical items called fetishes. By the way, the fetishes are items with uh, spirits mounted to them. There will be a separate videos about spirits, but that's all you need to know for now. Next we have Philodox. Philodox are the half moons. They are the arbitrators, in a way the leaders, the lawmakers of the werewolves. Uh, they are the ones who interpret the litany um, and uh, pass judgment upon transgressions for Garou, other Garou, Garou being werewolves. They also uh, enact punishment rights. So, in a way, they do act in, on occasions as judge, judge, jury, and executioner. But, of course, these practices differ from tribe to tribe, well, tribes in a bit as well. Then we have the Gibbous moon, almost full moon, the Galliards, the Bard's moon, the Storyteller's moon. These Garou, these werewolves, they're very passionate. They're very... Uh, Fiery. They're all about uh, collecting knowledge, traditions, uh, sharing stories. They're the ones who at Garu meetings called moods or hearings, lesser meetings, uh, retell the uh, stories of their packs, what had happened, glorious or even inglorious deeds that their pack members may have done, which contributes a lot in the awarding of renown, among other things. Other stories they tell are simply legends or tales meant to teach people from the past finally we have the full moon the Akruans the Akruans or Arruans are basically the warriors they are the war leaders warlords they are the ones who will lead a pack into battle along with the Calliards their passion and their well short fuse in, on many occasions is to be reckoned with. They are probably the most dangerous in a combat situation, and as I said, often war uh, war party leaders. Uh, 
being trained from childhood to perform their role. Um, what else could I say about all species? Well, that would be about it. Also, let's see about this character, about this Mist Paul we have here. Well, Mist Paul will be, let's make him an Arun. Uh, an, Ar an Arun. He will be a Metis Arun. So we know what's his breed, we know what's his all species. Let's choose a tribe. There are 13 tribes. I will make individual videos for each of them. Uh, however, here we will choose the Black Furies. The Black Furies are an interesting tribe uh, that are mainly comprised of female Daru. They do accept males, but only medicines as they are sterile. And that is mainly because of their traditions. They are, well, let's say, staunch feminists, among other things. And uh, their spirit patron, uh, Pegasus, does not really accept male Naru. They are uh, richly entrenched in Mediterranean culture, mainly Greek. So, those of you who like Greek culture might like the Black Furies. So, we have chosen the Black Furies. Now let's see, he doesn't he doesn't really belong to a pack yet, this missed Paul. Uh, he doesn't have a pack totem. But let's see, the concept would be let's call him a tactical coordinator. It sounds mouthful for a werewolf, yes I know. But it simply reflects how this werewolf is like. He is one who thinks on his feet in battle and coordinates packs um, from a tactical point of view, which would reflect actually he would be quite intelligent and uh, able to analyze the situation on the battlefield um, and give orders as appropriate to his pack members in a combat situation. So there we go. He's a tactical coordinator. Now. Um, as with any World of Darkness game, if you have played before, if you haven't, no worries, I will explain. You have a set of attributes, which come in physical, social, and mental. Now, these define who your character is in the, in the sense of, um, let's say, basic capabilities, such as strength, or charisma, or perception. What does he excel at? Is he more brawny, more physical? Is he social? Is he socially adept? Or is, does he rely more on uh, mental abilities, such as perception? Is he more intelligent? Is he witty? Any, any could be. Here, you have to choose a primary category where you will spend your attributes, namely physical, social, and mental. In this case, so we have physical, social, and mental. Uh, in our case, we're playing an, an Arun, so... I would say let's make his primary uh, category physical and based on what we choose, primary, secondary and ter tertiary, we have a number of points to spend. We get one a point in uh, each attribute. So we have, let's say, we will choose physical first, mental second and social third. So in this case, I will give him... Hmm, three points in stamina. He will have a stamina of four. Uh, by the way, this is his basic. Uh, basically, let's say what he would have in Hobbit form, in human form. Strength three, dexterity two, as you can see. I've spent my seven points. In my secondary, which is mental, I have five points. Here I will spend one in intelligence. Two in perception, two in wits. So he's quite perceptive, he's averagely intelligent, and his wits, which represent his ability to think on his feet. So he's not really easy to take by surprise. Uh, a, a characteristic of two, by the way, means you're above average. Next, we have social. Now, in social, and uh, I will have three points, but I will do like this. I'll spend two points, one in Charisma, one in Manipulation, and the other in the third one in Charisma. Why am I leaving his appearance of one? One actually represents a fairly ugly person, but 
as I did say, methods come with a deformity, I will have to uh, choose a deformity. In his case, I'm going to choose the patchy hide. I don't exactly remember the, the name now, but on the character sheet on the second page, if you go lower, you will have the methods deformity, which will be patchy hide. Well, I called it patchy hide. Basically, the character has um, a diseased skin with patches of fur here and there. He has pustules, he itches all the time. However, uh, the drawback of this patchy hide is his appearance cannot be above one. But it does grant him an additional dice to solve damage because it's actually quite tough leather. So, yeah, there are drawbacks and advantages even in the formulas. Now, I want to think about what my character knows. I mean, he's a Metis. He's obviously been raised in a set uh, by other Garou. So I have to think about what is it this uh, Mist Paul would know. I have here abilities. These are talents, skills, and knowledges. Talents represent innate skills like alertness, athletics, leadership. Um, skills represent practical skills, learned skills that are not uh, related to school or education. So here you would have animal care, for example, which is dealing with animals, uh, drive, stealth, survival. These are basically trained skills. Finally, we have uh, knowledges. Knowledges contain basically uh, it taught um, book knowledge. Let's call it book knowledge, like what you will learn in school using the computer, knowing about laws, um, medicine, or called science. Th that would be good examples. Now uh, we will go to see. We have to prioritize again, just like the abilities, talents, skills, or knowledges, but let's see which one do we give to Mistpo as his primary. Uh, well, being a, an Arun, let's say we will give his talents as primary. So he will have 13 points, remember. Uh, then he will have skills. Um, let's see, we will go. Hmm. Talent, skills, knowledges. Let's see. Talents, I guess, skills, and last knowledges. Here we have 13 points in the talents, 9 points in skills, 5 points in knowledges. I'm not going to start with the talents because I kind of know what he needs. I'm going to start with the knowledges um, because it's the least points. So let's say he knows a bit about... Computers. He didn't really go to school being a metis, so basically, you know, he was homeschooled. Um, he knows a little bit about um, hmm. Let's say he knows a bit about investigation and a bit about technology. Then we will write here an additional trait, which would be uh, military. Tactics. Uh, this is uh, basically the, the stuff that you would pick up from a book. So in our case, Mist Paul would have picked up uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War. This is a dumb example, but it's an example. And he would have read about it and would have expanded his knowledge about it. Here I will spend two points. What does he use this knowledge for? Basically organizing squad packs as military squads, assigning them roles, among other things, and, you know, overall tactical coordination. Uh, let's see, then we'll go to skills. Here he would be, he would have some dots in survival. Let's give him two, he has seven left. Then, well, he would be capable with melee. Let's give him two dots here as well. Remember, when we create characters, we cannot have initials above three. Uh, he will know firearms, animal can. Let's say, let's assume he likes animals, so he has six points. Um, we will give him a. 
one point in drive, he is a capable driver should he ever need to, but he can't really drive really well. Or actually, better crafts. Sounds better. Crafts, by the way, covers stuff as repairs, mechanical objects, repairing object um, um, furniture, or even crafting. So we have now eight points. We will give him another point in melee. So what can we say here, basically? He knows a bit about uh, firearms, crafting, and animal games. So he can kind of, kind of handle animals. He can craft. He can shoot a little bit. But his main asset is melee. He prefers using close combat weapons. Uh, melee in includes basically swords, axes, improvised weapons among other things. Um, he's not very stealthy, by the way. As you can see here, he's more... He's a more blunt character. Then we would think about his talents. These are his innate skills. Um, here we would go, let's say... Definitely he would need... Let's give him Primal Urge. This is used for shape-shifting, by the way. Normally you, you roll Stamina plus Primal Urge. Difficulty six or seven, depending on uh, the form you wish to go to. And it will help you with shape shifting, so why not? Uh, let's also give him two points in brawl, two points in leadership, and two in intimidation. Well, I assume he would be quite intimidating being a warrior. Um, athletics, alertness, and one point in empathy. So he's not really a dull uh, unfeeling person. Um, as you can see, he doesn't really have subterfuge or streetwise. Subterfuge is deception. Streetwise is knowing his way around the street. He's a pure guru tactical coordinator. That's his job. And here we spent, as you see, 13 points. And we have one more point in skills. Okay, so we have only eight. My bad. Um, then we would give him another point in firearms. It would help the character, since, again, he's a warrior. So we have... No. Yes. One more point in firearms. So 13, 9, and 5. Next, we need to think about his... Um, Let's go for gifts. Um, each werewolf receives three gifts, namely one from his breed, one from his auspice, and one from his tribe. These are the starter gifts as a rank one. And being a rank one also, we have to choose it here or write it here, Cleat. Cleat basically is a rank one werewolf. He is no longer a cub, he has passed through his right of change, and he has been fully accepted as a young member of his Perspective tribe set or whatever it is he is. We have three gifts, so let's see. I will choose in his case. This doesn't contain all the object, the gifts, by the way. You can actually write it if you don't find it here. I will just use the ones present. Um, I will use hmm, primal anger. Um, Primal Anger would be his uh, breed gift. Uh, then let's see, an auspice gift. Since he is quite good with leadership, I would think a good gift called Inspiration would be good. Inspiration basically allows him to support the pack, to encourage them in close combat. In combat, it's not necessarily an offensive gift, but it's more of a support gift, even though it's he's an Akul. And then his tribal gift. Let's see, Black Furies. They do have some pretty nice gifts. I'm not really familiar with them. I've never played one before, by the way. But don't worry, we'll figure out something nice for Mistball. Uh, let's see, Mistball, 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 those are feared gifts. Sense Worm, Heightened Senses, Breath of the Wild. Well, yeah, let's say, let's take 
heightened senses. Heightened senses basically allows him to increase his own senses to be able to detect things easier, be it through sense, smell, hearing. Uh, next, we move to set up his rage, gnosis, and willpower. Now, uh, based on your moon sign, if you remember, uh, I did have different moon signs and different roles. Now, in case of an Arun, you will get five rage, basically the most, which also represents, in a way, your, well, short fuse desire for battle, battle. Well, you don't really desire battle, but you get it, basically. They're easier to piss off. Uh, the other auspices, Ragabash get one, Theod get two, Philodox three, Galliard four. Then his Gnosis. Gnosis represents a spiritual affinity for a werewolf. His connection to the spirit world. Normally, Homids get one, Lupus get five, but Metis being in between get three Gnosis. Gnosis is used for roles, for example, to activate gifts or uh, using the sidestep move, basically moving from the physical world into the spirit world and the other way around. And willpower, you will excuse me, I do have to check the book here, uh, my PDF version of Werewolf the Apocalypse. Um, yes, Black Furies start with Willpower 3. Willpower is your ability to resist mental influence, among other things. Um, your, the fortitude of your will, let's call it that way. Then we'll go to backgrounds. Backgrounds are kind of give a bit of detail about your characters, who he is, does he have allies, friends, contacts. Uh, and let's, let's think, in Mr. Paul's case, let's see, let's, he doesn't really have an income, but uh, let's see, he would have allies, ancestors, contacts, uh, these, I'm also reading for you the backgrounds, allies, ancestors, contacts, fate, fetish, kinfolk, mentor, puberty, resources, rights, spirit, and heritage, and totem. What does each represent? In short, Allies represents people who are your friends, who would help you, but most likely will uh, expect a favor in return. Ancestors represent your connection to your ancestors in many ways. You can draw upon their power in certain occasions. Contacts, people you know you can coerce and manipulate into doing favors for you. Faith, this is your fate as a character. Are you, are you destined to a great action that will save the Garu nation, perhaps, or your sept. Fetish. Fetish represents a magical item that you hold and use, such as a magical sword, a uh, sword bound with a spirit inside of it. Kinfolk. Kinfolk represent your relatives, your close relations, humans or wolves related to you. A uh, mentor is an older Garu who actually has taken interest in you and sometimes offers advice and guidance. Pure breed. Pure breed represents uh, how close are you to the original uh, tribal line, in this case, Black Furies. Resources represent money, basically liquidities and assets you own, such as a house, a computer, whatever you make from your job will be covered by resources. Rights. Rights represents the level of rights you totally possess, uh, which uh, rights, by the way, are from level 1 to 5, and they are, in a way, magical rights you enact to achieve a goal, such as cleansing corruption from a unfortunate Garu or human or cat or wolf. Spirit heritage represents your spiritual attunement, a uh, spiritual attunement to a certain type of spirit who might be better inclined when you encounter them in your travel city Umbra. For example, Mistpole could be having spiritual affinity, uh, affinity to, or heritage to, let's say, hmm, unicorn spirits. Well, this is an example. Or uh, animal spirits. Animal spirits actually would be a better category because it would include a lot of animals and they might see him better. Totem uh, is a pooled background, uh, which represents uh, in a pack how strong the totem they can summon be. Basically, the higher the background for all members that pool it, they can access more powerful spirits to be their uh, totem patron. 
But let's go back to Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul, let's say he has, well, he has kid. Let's say he has pure breed of one. He is not really the most pure breed Black Fury, but he's there. You can see the resemblance. He has um, a mentor, uh, an elder guru of, let's say, female Black Fury who advises him now and then, who has taken pity on this poor Medis. Then finally, we would have, let's see, he, let's say he has also a bunch of contacts um, or allies would suit him, no, ancestors actually. He has an ancestor, ancestor whose strength he can draw upon. And finally, he has also resources one. Well, he sometimes participates in rights art or he has some sort of income, for example. Now, we have the final step in the preliminary stage, which we have Renown. Renown is a way for Garou to recognize one's greatness. Um, it comes in uh, three types, glory, honor, and wisdom. All Garou can get any type. Glory represents basically uh, deeds in battle, but not only. Honor represents uh, following the law, being honest. Um, basically, generally being what you would see as, or we would see as human, as honorable. Uh, some tribes take it to the extreme, such as the Silver Fangs, but in, in short, that's what it is. Wisdom is basically acting with prudence, learning a right, uh, discovering a gift, a talent, or perhaps creating a magical item would grant you wisdom. Uh, also, it can come from other sources as well, but these are just mere examples where you could get this wisdom from. But in case of Aruns, they start by default with two glory and one honor. Obviously, you can see they're very martially oriented. They're not really the most subtle Garu. They're warriors after all. Now, now we know who Mistpo is. Uh, basically, this stage, by the way, we have one more stage, which would record his uh, freebies. This is him basically after his first change. Who was he at, at, at the end of his first change? Of course, he grew a little bit now. He's a bit more experienced. Therefore, the free is coming. Mm, and we have 15 of them. And they, uh, to increase different things, of course, you have different costs. To increase attributes, you would pay five freebies. To increase, let's say, strength from three to four. But I won't. I will just simply show you. To increase abilities costs two points per dot in any ability, be it talent, skill, or knowledge. Uh, backgrounds cost one freebie per dot. Then uh, gifts cost seven freebies per gift. Only level one gifts, uh, which basically are accessible to your rank one. Rage costs one rage. Per point gnosis costs two willpower costs one per point so let's think about what does uh mist for me well we see he's quite decent at melee he's okay with guns uh let's think about it we would say he would need a bit about you know about military tactics well let's see he's passionate about it it's his role in society and he does, being a warrior doesn't mean being a brute so he knows a bit more about military tactics. Um, on the other hand, let's see. We would give him perhaps another point in leadership. And one other in brawl. So we see he's already six freebies. Um, finally, let's see what else can we give him. We have another nine left. Let's increase his willpower to five. So we have eight freebies left used. We used six on abilities, two on willpower. So we have seven points left. Of course, now I could just go crazy and buy him another gift, but I won't. I would just rather, I would rather choose to hone his abilities. And in this case, I will put his brawl to four. He is quite a talented warrior, especially with his teeth and claws. And let's see, then we have 10 freebies. Let's put another two in alert. One in alertness, so basically 12 freebies used. And 
let's give him one more point in subterfuge. No, he's not really well, deceitful. Let's give him another point in survival. After all, in the, as a military man in the Garou society, as a warrior, he might need to know how to survive. So, this is basically what Mistfall looks right now. I have one freebie left, by the way. And which I will use to increase his willpower to six. So, it means he's quite determined. Of course, the higher the willpower, the more determined the character is. Here you could write, for example, he has zero experience. He has nada. Um, and we will continue. For good reference, I would recommend, when you make your characters, to write here, the changes to your statistics in your different forms. In case of Mistfall, we would have in Glabro. Glabro, now here are the forms. As I said, Homid, normal human, Glabro, uh, somewhere between werewolf and man, basically teen wolf, if you remember the TV show. Krinos is his war form. In case of Mistfall, it's also his birth form. His foe is the dire wolf, while Lupus is the wolf. Uh, in this case, let's say, in Glabro he would have his strength 3, if you remember. He gains plus 2 in strength, plus 2 in stamina. So he's strength 5, here stamina 6. So, and his manipulation drops to 0 in this form. Appearance drops to 0. He is damn ugly in this form. Next we will have uh, Krinos. Krinos is your war form. Here you would have strength plus four. So here strength three plus four, strength seven. Dexterity plus one, so he would go to dexterity four. And stamina of three plus four from what he has uh, initially. So basically, four plus three, stamina seven. Then we would have his form, his uh, viral form. He would be at strength six. Dexterity 5, stamina 7, again. And in his lupus form, he would be strength 4, dexterity 5, stamina 6. So as you can see, he's, he's actually mostly resilient. He's not really necessarily strong. He relies on resilience. Now, here, uh, what I would recommend if you have fetishes, for example, let's say, let's assume you would have one, you write here a uh, Fang Dagger, it's, I think it's a level 3 and it costs, it costs 3 and basically made for me. Fang calls it like it damage. Well, he doesn't have this, but this is an example on how to fill your uh, abilities. In the other traits column, if you have other skills that are not, or talents or knowledges that are, uh, list, are not listed here, feel free to write, write them below. But in this case, of course, we will delete the item because Mist what does not possess one. Possess one, but there's not yet. Uh, battle scars, it's good to write them. They also are good for uh, renown, um, among other things. Mostly you will get glory renown out of them, but it's a good way to get it. Uh, if you would be someone who would uh, perform rites, of course, here I'll write the, I would choose the rites. There are many more than this, but these are the ones that were stored in this PDF template. Now, let's assume Mistpo has a weapon. Well, let's say he has, um, <laughs> let's uh, verify, what shall we give him from Werewolf the Apocalypse? <laughs> what, he would have common ranged weapons, really. Um, he would have, from ranged weapons, he would have a, let's just say, heavy revolver. His role would be his dexterity plus firearms, by the way. So he would be dexterity 3, firearms 3, 
Uh, difficulty six to hit. It was six damage, if I recall correctly. Range thirty-five. Uh, he has a rate of fire of two and six ammo per drum. Then you would have, let's say, a battle axe. Let's verify the book again. I don't remember these on the top of my head, so please forgive me. Mm, let's look at melee weapons. He has an axe, uh, which is, let's say, difficult. His dexterity plus melee, which would be seven normally, or more if it's in the appropriate forms. Difficulty seven to hit. Uh, strength plus three. Um, put here an L for lethal. And let's put here an M for melee. It's a melee weapon, so that will be it. Um, melee weapons also have a um, concealed thing. All weapons actually have it. So how would he be able to conceal a battle axe? So. This would be basically his equipment. What other things can we buy here? Well, that's about it. Basically, weapons. Also, you have here you have a very beautiful little chart that uh, shows you what kind of uh, roles to make when employing certain maneuvers. For example, punching, kicking, grappling, clawing, body tackle, biting. Very exact role to perform it. And let's. Give him an armor, I would say. Let's see if there's any armor we can give to him. Well, let's not give him any armor. He's tough enough as it is. I don't know exactly what page the armors are on, but there we go. So let's look again over Mistpo from the beginning to end. So we know Mistpo is a Metis, as we did discuss. Metis is a child of two, child of two werewolves. Uh, wolf, where uh, where wolf parents? He's an Arun, so he's a warrior, a full moon. He belongs to the Black Fury tribe, but being a Metis, he was accepted by Pegasus. Pegasus is the little finicky flying horse. I tell you that. Uh, he's a tactical coordinator. His role basically is to coordinate packs and be some sort of uh, war leader. Uh, <laughs> He's, of course, specialized in physical, then mental, then social abilities. Uh, he's quite, he's, well, above average strong, above average agile, but very, very tough, like twice as tough as a normal human in its omit form. He's quite charismatic, not very manipulative, and, well, he's ugly like hell due to his deformity. He's perceptive and witty, but only averagely intelligent. Uh, then we look at his stats. Of course, we will see he has three dots in alertness, two in athletics, four in brawl, so he's quite good at fighting with his claws or teeth. He's, well, averagely intimidating. He's a good leader, though, and he's quite well attuned to his uh, inner wolfman spirit, basically. Uh, in his skills, we would see his decent with firearms, uh, very okay at melee and stealth, but not really good at dealing with animals and crafting, but he's not slouch yet either. In his knowledge, as you would see, he knows how to use a computer, and he's a passable investigator. He also knows a bit about technology, but his main area of study is military uh, What do we know about his background? Well, we know he's quite close to the, he's not very close to the original Black Fury line, but he has resemblances. Uh, he has a mentor, an elder Garu, who advises him and guides him now and then. He has quite a good connection to his ancestors, which he may draw upon, upon need. And resources, well, he has his way of making money on occasion, so he's not completely broke. Now we have his gifts. Gifts are basically something, by the way, that are taught by spirits to Garu. And as I mentioned, you get three on startup, one from breed, one from uh, auspice, and one from tribe. So in his case, he has primal anger, 
from uh, Metis, inspiration from, from Arun, and heightened senses from Black Furious. He, of course, comes with a whopping 5 rage, 3 gnosis, and 6 willpower. This is after previous. He has 3 gnosis because he's a Metis, 5 rage because he's an Arun. He started with 3 willpower, but I gave him another 3. He, he's rank 1, clear. He has no experience whatsoever, and he is has two glory and one wisdom. Here I've recorded his stats, as you can see, and I hope you will do the same. These actually really do help. And of course, I choose the patchy hide before me if I remember says the name. And I've given a few weapons. He has a heavy revolver uh, and a battle axe. These are this is his melee weapon and his ranged weapon. Otherwise, he does also rely on claws and teeth. And in the end, of course, you can also save your character sheet as characters. And let's see, it's just a folder here called Black Fury. And we'll just save it here as Mist Paul. But there you go. So now we've basically saved our char character and he is ready to play. Anyway, back to our broadcast. I hope you found this little video informative. Uh, I don't really have any editing tools, so basically I'll just leave it as is. And I hope it helps you understand in a way how things work with World of the Apocalypse. Uh, I hope it has helped you make a character and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments either on facebook or on the world of experiment page if you're a member or on uh, youtube i'll be able to look at them now and then and hopefully provide uh, appropriate answers thank you for watching and i hope i was able to give you a little bit of insight in how to create a world character well uh, I wish you a good day, good morning, or good night, wherever you are, and thanks for watching.